Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everybody. This is a presentation on treatment of dry eye syndrome. Uh, I claim no financial interest in uh, none of the items that might be demonstrated in this presentation or otherwise. And in treatment of dry eye syndrome, we have those nine, nine categories. First is tear substitutes, second is cyclosporin, third is dietary supplements, then comes androgen, androgen eye drops, then humidifiers and goggles, autologous serum, autologous saliva, mybomia gland dysfunction treatment, and we end by intense pulsed light treatment. Tear substitutes are so many with a, a lot of uh, varieties and uh, trade names that are available in markets differing from one country to another. Cyclosporin, uh, ophthalmic solution of a concentration of 0.05% is available under the uh, trade name of Restasis. Uh, it is said to inhibit the process of apoptosis, thus restoring the cells of the lacrimal gland and uh, uh, restoring tear film uh, formation uh, with respect to volume, composition, and stability. It usually has a peak effect after one month. However, the eye drops have a side uh, effect uh, problem and this includes burning, redness, discharge, sometimes watering, pain, foreign body sensation, itching, stinging, and maybe some blurring of vision. They are actually uh, in, contraindicated in active eye infection, uh, contraindicated when there is history of herpes. And uh, in the condition of uh, you using cyclosporin eye drops, there is usually no additive effect of steroids or plugs on the process of uh, treatment of dry eye. Dietary supplements have been hailed by many uh, practitioners, like vitamin E, lactoferrin, omega-3, omega-6 essential fatty acids, uh, or mineral cofactors. But the, the uh, point that I'd like to stress is this is as a part of general good health, no actual uh, evidence for any of these to treat dry eye. They are necessary for epithelial growth and maturation, differentiation of stem into goblet cells, stem cells into goblet cells, deficiency uh, of these agents might lead to mucin deficiency, meibomian gland dysfunction, or keratinization, and uh, some of these supplements might be used as a local application. They reduce the inflammatory activity they alter the lipid profile of meibomian gland uh, activity and stimulate aqueous tear secretion. Adverse effects uh, might occur due to contamination with heavy metals, rapid oxidation after processing uh, the uh, already prepared samples. They may raise the clotting time and there's a question mark about their use in lactation and pregnancy. Uh, androgen eye drops are actually under trial and their effects might be at the cellular level by reducing lymphocyte infiltration, that is anti-inflammatory effect, stimulating a mucus secretion, restoring meibomian gland, uh, meibomian gland function in the condition of dysfunction and increasing the number of receptors. Goggles and humidifiers have a clear effect there are uh, some uh, brands available in the market like uh, Panoptics or uh, Tranquil Eyes. The names uh, give an impression of improvement, playing probably a psychological role as well by creating a moisture env environment around the eye uh, by sealing the area around the uh, conjunctival sac. Autologous serum eye drops. Uh, has a, an effect on the epithelial uh, cell cultures by uh, better maintaining their life. It's non-allergic, components are similar to normal tears as it is taken from the same subject or individual, uh, but they need blood donation and there is a risk of infection. 
Autologous saliva is taken directly from the parotid gland, saved frozen, and might be used later on a process which is not uh, widespread, but might be tried. And then we come to the seventh uh, category, which is, the, which is the treatment of meibomian gland dysfunction. Meibomian gland dysfunction uh, might be treated by lead hygiene, by antibiotics, by topical antibiotics, or by topical steroids. Lead hygiene includes warm compresses and massage and scrubs using the Q-tips at the uh, openings of the meibomian glands with some compression, and this actually works very well, gives marvelous results. Antibiotics have an antibacterial and anti-inflammatory effects, like tetracycline, doxycycline, and azithromycin specifically. These might be used uh, orally or uh, topically. And topical steroids have an uh, effect on reducing the inflammatory condition. And then we shift to the intense uh, pulsed light uh, used uh, in uh, delivered in this machine called EI. Uh, it actually works on, it's called IPL uh, for short, uh, delivered on the lacrimal gland itself and on the meibomian glands. Uh, and it is said that this intense, intense uh, pulsed light uh, might stimulate the lacrimal gland to resecrete. Uh, and uh, might stimulate the meibomian glands to uh, refunction uh, properly. This is the condition. Both eyes are protected and the machine works uh, through the skin on the uh, meibomian glands. And now we, uh, we shift to a more uh, vigorous and aggressive part of treatment, which is surgery. And sometimes with meibomian gland dysfunction, we uh, may find resistance to treatment up to uh, lumps forming in the meibomian glands. And I've seen a couple of cases in which some ophthalmologists might uh, think of them being uh, neoplasms even. Uh, this is indicated in the resistant cases, as I said, and it has been first described by Muskin in California in 2012, uh, who industrially shared in a manufacturing set of probes. Uh, I uh, had the idea of probing the glands uh, using proline 6 o thread tucked on a 30 gauge needle, I'll show you later, and I published this in 2015 and the glands were probed and infused with treating material like antibiotic or uh, steroid. This is this 30 gauge needle which is very thin tapered at the end compared to the 23rd gauge needle that we all uh, use. This is half the diameter from inside and this is the 70 proline. I take the thread of 7O proline, which has a diameter of 0.2 millimeter, and I can thread it into the 0.3 millimeter 30 gauge needle. And in this way, I can use the threaded needle uh, to probe the openings of the lacrimal glands using the proline thread as a uh, guide wire. In this way, I may probe the glands and infuse them with a treating material. And this, this is the uh, guide wire inside the openings of the meibomian glands. And this gives actually very good results that I published in 2015. Another idea is to decrease the outflow Decreasing the outflow of tears might be via punctal occlusion, induction of blephrotosis or tarsorophy. Punctal occlusion might be permanent like cauterization or temporary like using punctal plugs uh, or by using a punch, punch conjunctival patch. We'll see that uh, later on. 
Uh, punctal plugs are of two types, uh, either absorbable like gelatin, collagen, or cat gut, or non-absorbable. And there are what is called the smart punctal plugs that are very malleable, having the shape of the lid margin. And in this way, they uh, uh, rest uh, very nicely in place. This is the punch conjunctival patch taken to be sutured into the uh, punctum, and this can be removed later on. Punctal plugs uh, might be temporarily used for one week, like collagen plugs and uh, auto uh, uh, absorbent, or long term for several months, like silicone plugs, and they are reversible. This is the structure of the plug, and these are actually uh, non perforated plugs. These are different from. Uh, the perforated plugs used in a perforator. These are uh, non-perforated, completely uh, solid plugs used to occlude the punctum in cases of dry eye syndrome, so as to decrease the uh, uh, drainage of the tear uh, solution. This is the, the punctal plug on the inserter, and this is the punctal plus, uh, plug in situ. Again, one punctal plug in place. Uh, the idea to increase the inflow if, of fluid is a rather more aggressive technique that is used in severe conditions. And there are four alternatives. The first or the simplest one is stenous duct. The stenous duct is that of the parotid gland. Stenous duct transposition into the conjunctival sac or interocular decantation, that is pulling both eyes together, pulling the uh, lacrimal pool of both eyes uh, together to be shared as one pool, or a salivary gland transplantation, and finally, and more heroically, the abdominal decru reservoir. This is stenous duct transposition, where the duct is surgically transposed into the uh, lacrimal sac, and uh, th this is uh, courtesy of Professor Manoub from Spain. Uh, actually, this needs a surgeon, not just an ophthalmic surgeon. This is interocular decantation, and this is a major salivary gland transplantation taken to be implanted with. Uh, the duct near the uh, lateral angle of the eye to help in secretion of saliva in into the sac and decreasing the condition of dry eye. A minor salivary gland might be transplanted as well. And then we come to the final heroic uh, idea of uh, Professor Murub uh, from Madrid, who uh, described this technique in 2003, uh, where a reservoir, the, a, a sort of an uh, automatic reservoir of fluid, is uh, implanted under the abdominal wall with a long tube passing into the eye to uh, make the eye wetter and uh, help in treatment of dry eye syndrome. Thank you very much.